3D printing prosthetic limbs for free! Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com with another look at some of the ways that we are winning and solutions-oriented stories. And yes, this is what I look like for my first winter in the American Southwest. I hope you're doing safe and sound whenever, wherever you are, my friends. I thank you so much for being here. We've got your free limbs, plus nature-based imagery, but first... National Reading Program Reaching Albuquerque Neighborhoods. This comes from the local KOAT. More on that in just a moment. It's a national initiative popping up all around Albuquerque called Little Free Libraries. They look like mailboxes but are filled with books. Neighbors came up with this little free library idea to stock free books for everyone in the neighborhood to get some free books without having to go to the library, said Saltillo Neighborhood Bookkeeper Luann Darris. Four years ago, residents of the Saltillo Neighborhood were looking for ways to get to know each other, and they agreed on installing a little free library. Neighbors donated materials, completed the construction, and painted all of them. They go check it periodically. We have what you call stewards of the library, and they go through and make sure there's no inappropriate content and things of that sort. I like that the photo that goes along with the story, and again, everything we say and play, always included in your show notes. You can see in the window of the Little Free Library, they've got, I think, a, a David Baldacci novel, and he pretty much writes like hefty, like Opus Day political conspiracy novels. So that's good that those are at least still in there. Neighbor said using the Little Free Library is simple. It's quite simple. Bring a book, take a book. There are dozens in other neighborhoods all around Albuquerque, but the initiative, as they write, reaches far beyond New Mexico. It's nationwide. We really just want to promote our neighborhood, and we're trying to promote community and keep our community in touch with each other and doing things together. This little initiative sort of keeps us together and sharing and caring, Dara says. Indeed, and it's kind of funny that they write the article as though it's like they invented it. And we're like, oh, no, no, we we didn't invent it. It's, it's nationwide. So folks listened to the morning show the other day. May have heard me kind of busting the balls of a local news reporter here at KOAT named Shelly Leggett. She was reporting on a bunch of crime in Albuquerque, and I said, oh, in other news, water wet. She didn't really get it, and I'm glad to see that she's actually doing this story, a little bit of positivity, and maybe shut my mouth and not try and be such a jerk on the tweets. I am James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. You're checking out Good News Next Week. Our second story this week, again, stop the presses. That's usually the thing on these Good News Next Week episodes. It's not something that might, you know, shatter the earth, but when you strip away all the craziness and all the divide and conquer and all that kind of stuff, you go, oh, wait, doing good makes you feel good, and nature is really natural and good for you. Spending time in nature can help allay symptoms of anxiety, a growing body of research indicates. Yes, I know we talk a lot about phony baloney research and grievance studies and all those sorts of things, but again, this is... I think it rings true. Hear me out. Getting outside isn't always practical, especially as the days grow shorter and the weather turns colder. Fortunately, there may be a simple workaround. A study published in October in Frontiers in Psychology. That boy needs therapy. Shows that mentally picturing a nature scene in a vivid, multi-sensory way can help ease anxious feelings. Past research has shown that a real-world connection with nature may help keep anxiety at bay. Study co-author Eric Breimer, PhD, reader in nature and health at Leeds Beckett University over in the UK, says we found a link between feeling highly connected to nature and low levels of anxiety. He notes that experiencing nature may have benefits for both state anxiety, that's in response Response to a specific situation that's viewed as threatening, and trait anxiety, which is just your general feeling towards being anxious. Being physically active in nature seems to be correlated with lower state and trait anxiety. We found that state anxiety can be lowered by going into nature. We will include this research in PDF form, which is not behind the paywall, which actually is a little bit better because it's worked that we should all sort of have and have access to. Information wants to be free. Nature-based guided imagery as an intervention for state anxiety. That sounds like a good album title and a good piece of research there. As we reach our third and final story here and our cover story on New World... New, no, it's, it's not New World next week. It's Good News next week. And deprogramming note, if you didn't know, as I mentioned on the morning show, there was no New World next week episode last week, though we hope to have... a kind of positive Thanksgiving week episode that we will tape just coming up here in a few days. 
But our third and final story, our cover story here on Good News next week, episode 72, Australian engineer uses 3D printers to make free prosthetic limbs when engineer Matt Botel was retrenched, which is, I had to look it up, Australian for laid off, which isn't being fired per se, it's more corporate speak, you know. St. Carlin euphemism for we can't, won't afford to pay you anymore. He got retrenched from his car manufacturing job with Toyota in October. His life took on a very different path. He splurged his payout on 3D printers and set up shop in his man cave on Phillip Island, about 150 kilometers southeast of Melbourne, designing and making cheap prosthetic limbs. Botel 38 said his ding light bulb moment occurred way back in 2004 when he was studying something called mechatronics in Japan, which sounds pretty rad. I tried on a million dollar bionic arm and thought, wow, this is really, really fantastic technology. Who on earth is going to be able to afford this? With the help of crowdfunding, Mr. Botel now has 12 3D printers in his workshop, along with prosthetic grade scanners, sophisticated software and equipment to make the limbs. And he's been working, I believe, with a, a, a neuroscience, some kind of, you know, who knows the science of how you should build the hand. And, he, you know, they work together pretty well. I bury the lead. He's given them away for free. One of my friends in Japan was actually able to play the piano again. It costs about 90 cents to make. He designs, his designs have a Creative Commons license that allows people to download, but then not sell or profit from them. He said his designs have been downloaded more than a thousand times, saving people an estimated six and a half million dollars. I don't charge for what I make. I don't even charge for the postage. And the way I'm able to do that is through crowdfunding, he said. And I will include the link to his crowdfunding site. Free 3D printed hands and arms for people in need. It's at a place called mycause.com.au, which I was not familiar with. But we're all kind of trying to do the same things. We are crowdsourcing this. We are doing it free and open source, and we're doing it voluntarily. And there's so many positive things, I think, to be thankful for here on this Thanksgiving week. And as we wrap up this Good News Next Week, episode number 72 for Thanksgiving week 2018, I just want to say how thankful I am for the media monarchy community and that I'm able to do what even myself sometimes seems like a crazy ass job, though it's what most of my life I think has has led towards and what I've been working towards and that, you know, teamwork makes the dream work and we're all able to kind of build this thing and I'll give everything right back to all y'all. Thank you so much for watching Good News Next Week, episode 72. Indeed, I am James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Again, thanking you so much for listening and watching and inviting you to join us in the Media Monarchy community, which streams Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Pacific time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen, except, of course, during Thanksgiving week and other holiday times. Consult your local deprogramming schedules. And, of course, as I got to meet Jello Biafra last weekend in Denver, I, of course, told him how I end every episode. And that's by reminding you to don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Filato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology, and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.